When we started this process, I wasn't extremely excited about it. I usually would avoid working with kids because it's very difficult in doing a play. But these kids are amazing. And last night, the Lord took me to a scripture in Joel. It's in the first chapter of Joel, starting in verse 2, and it says, Hear this, you elders. Give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days, or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it. Let your children tell their children, and their children to another generation. This world has faced villains ever since the day of Esther. My generation, uh, and Rabbi alluded to all of those evils that have been in the world since that time. But my generation, there's a lot of them that are lost because they don't have a light to guide them back. But the genera our generation here at the tabernacle, the generation that I am so happy to be a part of, has produced a pastor and a preacher, two amazing musicians, and an outstanding photographer. Because someone in their lives cared enough to be a light to either guide them back or to guide them along the way. So what does the next generation have to offer? If we don't train them up, if we don't take care of them, and this is the lesson that God taught me, if we let them perish, then they will perish. That was the lesson I learned. God told me, I have called you to do these things because they need to be raised up. We can't forget the children. And I remember going to Sunday school as a kid. I wasn't raised in church, but my aunt tried her best to keep me in church. And I remember going to Sunday school and, and somebody who really didn't want to deal with kids. And kind of tucking the kids off into the background just so they weren't bothering everybody else, giving them something else to do. That's not the way we do it here. Those kids, my kids, these kids, they're taught. My daughters can, can quote scripture. That's why the main reason, the major reason, why we continue to come back each and every week for Shabbat is because our children are being raised up the way that God wants them to be raised up. These are amazing kids. Each and every one of them has touched my heart. They have done something inside of me that I didn't think was possible. They moved me. They moved me in a way that almost amazed me. In the in the scripture or in the play, Miss Esther has a has a line that says, I saw God in their eyes, and I hope he saw they saw his light in me. I pray that I can impact somebody like that. I pray that I can impact somebody the way Miss Esther impacted the character of Christian. And I pray that through the process of this play, that somehow the adults that were involved impacted their lives. I don't want you to ever forget this day. I don't want you to ever forget this play. I want you to always remember it, not always always remember it. I want you to take it to your kids and to their kids. And continue passing this story on because if we forget this story, then it's going to happen again and again and again. Normally somebody would get up here and give a devotional on how the world is being impacted by a similar character to the villain in this story. This year we decided we would let the generations speak for themselves. Through the story of Esther, we learn how one brave woman changed everything. And how important it is to pass the stories of our ancestors to future generations. 
stories of struggle and victory, stories of giants that we face, and of what Hashem does to defeat them. The battle is His. But many times, He uses us to have a part in His plan, just as Esther, Mordecai. I and the Jewish people of that day fasted and prayed. They interceded on behalf of others and for themselves. Hashem can use one person to change another's life or the lives of a family or a whole nation. And the Lord wants to use you and me. Many times we do not see the Lord in our circumstances, but He is there, working behind the scenes, watching over us, and causing all things to work together for our good. We can learn from this story how much Hashem loves us. He is utmost concern is in our, our best interest. As an orphan, Esther had no mother or father, but the Lord had a plan in motion. He prepared a place in the loving home, home of her uncle Mordecai, who would instill a confidence in her, in her and a trust in him that he would not ask her to do anything he had not equipped her for. We tend to focus mostly on Esther, but this story is really as much about Mordecai as it is her. Mordecai is a picture of a true and valiant man of the Lord. Another thing that we can learn from this story is the importance of family and friends, and friends who will come alongside us when we don't understand and when we fail, even when we are at, at our, our worst. worst. And they see us as the Lord sees us, and He sees a finished Proud, product, a vessel of gold. When evil seems to be bearing down on us, remember, but God, Hashem will prevail. He is our defense, and His purpose for us will come to fruition. And as the Jewish people in the day of Esther came together for one common purpose, which ended up saving their own lives. They were unaware of the bigness of what they did. They saved us, and they saved our heritage. Each of us represent a piece of that heritage. And we, we each of us here, has a part of passing on to the next generation. <laughs> that has been instilled and lit within us from the beginning of time. Although we stand here today, a few, we are many. There is a host of heaven and all those that have gone before us stand with us as we come together today. We stand strong in the Lord. We stand as one. We are our God. We are the chosen people of our God.